Well, hi folks, I'll just uh, want to give you a bit of a look at my chilies that I've grown this year because I'm really chuffed with them and I'll just try and explain the sort of process I, I go about when I grow them. So, because I've, I've had a really good cracking sort of crop of chilies this year, if you look at some of these, absolutely astounding. These are uh, Prairie Fire and this one here, this is the Joe's Long one, if I get this out. Show you that thing. Absolutely crazy that one. So, and they're all grown exactly the same way. Treating them mean, really. So, basically, what I do is, it couldn't be easier, I just use the worst compost you can get because I found that rich compost and soil based compost like John Innes, they don't seem to like it. They seem to like poor and sort of open structured compost like this, you know, like really fibrous and twiggy, the sort of stuff that you go, oh god, that's rubbish, but they seem to love it. So what I do is, I saw mine on, it's all about the 20s, I saw them on about the 20th of February, I'll put a picture here, and then in about two weeks they've come up, so there should be a picture up showing what they're like in early March. And then, basically, I just never feed them until until they start flowering and I keep them inside under some little lights just on a windowsill because my, my windowsill is only west facing and I don't get a lot of sunshine I just put by these little um, fluorescent, compact fluorescent bulbs they're only about 20 watts each and I just hang them over the top and they give them a bit of supplemental lighting and then it's usually about the 20th of May and nearly the end of May before it's warm enough to plant them out into the greenhouse by which stage they're still only tiny after nearly three months and they're about this size. And then same again, all I do, don't bother feeding them yet, no point in feeding them until they start flowering. And then another month later, just keeping them as warm as possible, full sun, just water them regularly, but not keeping them too wet, they should look like this. Now once they get to about that size, and they're just starting to produce flowers, what I do is absolutely treat them terribly. I don't water them, partly I only water them when they really need it. I don't mind if they go limp in the sunshine, if it dries out, if they start to wilt. Because what that does, it just shocks the plant into thinking, oh no, I'm dying. I need to produce loads and loads of flowers. So that's what happens, if you just shock it, you give it a bit of stress and it produces loads and loads of flowers. That's why you get loads and loads of chilies. So like I say, even if they will, you water them at the end of the day and they come back to life, but they produce loads and loads of flowers. And then once you've got loads of flowers, especially with these, you don't need to do anything with them because they sort of stop at that height. The compact ones, like Prairie Fire. And then they just get pollinated. They're quite easy to pollinate. Basically all I do is just give it a quick tap. Middle of the day if you can, when the pollen's nice and ripe. Just a quick raft like that. Don't bother pollinating with a brush or anything and then uh, or they'll let the bees in the bees will do it and then once you've got loads and loads of little chilies on then you start to feed them I feed them like anything with um, I find tomorite's a good fertilizer that's actually a tomato fertilizer it's a little bit dearer than uh, than your bog standard ones but it, it seems to do them really well and then in about another month July they look like this That's for me anyway, up in Yorkshire where it's cold, so you know, they're quite late, like I said, probably a lot of you have grown the far better chilies, but I'm just trying to show you what I do and the way I treat them mean to produce loads of chilies. And then basically that's it really, they just slowly get riper, especially the Joe's longs, they're just huge, they're getting over a foot long. But what I've had trouble with this year is my old uh, habaneros, I've got a few on now few little ones but they were just so late, I only planted them a month later actually, I think you need to plant the really hot ones a lot earlier because they need a long growing season but I've not had a great a lot of success. Tons and tons of flowers on like you say but it's just a bit late in the season. But uh, no basically that's about it, that's my tips for, well that's how I grow my chilies anyway and you get a hell of a crop on so prairie fire, they're about 50,000 on the Scoville heat unit thing. So they're pretty hot. Habaneros, they're 250,000. And your Joe's long, they're quite mild, they're about 10 to 15,000. So they're just like, you can eat those without blowing your head off. 
So basically my tips are get them sowed early, don't feed them until your flowers come and then when your flowers just start to come, treat them mean, don't water them very much, shock them so they produce loads of flowers. As soon as they've got loads of flowers on and the flowers start to turn into chilies, then feed them like, like you would a tomato plant with wheat tomato feed, full sunshine, give them quite a lot of water there and then that's it, you should get a really good crop. So just a quick chilli video because it's the end of the season and it's about the only things that's growing now. Brought them into the house because it's too cold in the greenhouse. So uh, that's about it folks, just a little bit of info on our groomy chillies this year. See you later.